Hello once again, everybody. As always, I'm Bart Massey, and as always, welcome once again to CS300 Software Engineering. I hope everyone's staying safe and well out there during these difficult times. Today, I want to talk to you about prototyping. This is a topic that crops up in our textbook at this point, and I'm not entirely clear exactly why. And my take on it is a little different than the textbooks, but I actually feel it's kind of fortunate it's here in the front because it's, to me, something that's very valuable and very important that we don't talk about enough when we talk about software development. So there we are. So yeah, I, I, I sort of tongue in cheek said, please ignore the book on this topic. I don't really mean that. The book has some interesting and useful stuff. The book is very focused though on product prototyping, which to me is one of the, often one of the less valuable forms of prototyping. What I wanna talk about here is the way that prototyping is a super powerful tool that can be used for all kinds of things. I wanna talk a little bit about what prototyping is and a little bit about how it often is done and give you some idea of why I'm so excited that you do prototyping, not only in this course, but for the rest of your career. So what's a prototype? A prototype is a thing that you build, not for its own sake, but to learn, to gather information, to find out something you didn't know. The idea of a prototype is I build a thing, I learn the thing, and then that prototype has served its purpose. So I throw something together to learn a thing. What might I wanna know? Is some technical thing doable? Is it good to do it that way? Does something I'm building, is it going to meet user needs? Uh, how do I do this? What, what order do I put things together in? What pieces do I need to make this thing work? Is this architecture I've designed gonna be a good architecture for solving my problem? The list goes on and on, and when I have questions like that, there's a lot of ways I can try to answer them, and one of the most powerful ways is to try some stuff out. That's what prototyping is, is trying stuff out to see what happens. And so what goes along with that is the idea that typically we're not trying to prototype whole big systems. We're trying to build the smallest prototype that answers the question. I have a question, for example, how does this system call work in Linux? Well, I'll build a little C program of three lines and, or five lines or 10 lines, whatever the smallest thing is I can, that calls the system call and sees what happens, right? And I'll play with that program for a while, trying out different uses of that system call, and eventually I will think I understand the system call. Now I'm done with that code. And it didn't take me very long to build. It didn't take me very long to try out. I've built a prototype, answered a question, I go on with my day. That is the power of prototyping. It's often the fastest way to answer a question or the best way to answer a question. What goes along with that is the idea that there are actually two kinds of prototypes that are pretty distinct. There's the reusable prototypes in which, yeah, you're building a prototype, but when you're done, you really plan to take a bunch of you know, software or whatever from the prototype and reuse it in the actual product. Or discardable, like my system call example. I probably don't plan to keep any of that. I wrote my 10 or 15 lines of code, I find out how the system call works, and I throw that code away. It's gone now, may I never see it again. And the distinction, is important because really, in my opinion, in the opinion of a lot of software developers, the default should be discardable. The purpose of a prototype is to learn something. It's not to produce code for a product. So don't try to mix those two. There's a lot of advantages of discarding it. First of all, you're not gonna build it quite the same way or often not at all the same way if you plan to throw it away at the end. It'll really help you to focus on building the smallest, simplest prototype that answers your question and it will help you do all that quickly. And second of all, you know, once you have the knowledge, once you've learned whatever it is, you're gonna do a better job with building it the second time anyway. Usually the building things the first time is the hard way and building things the second time, well, that's the easy way and it's just way nicer that way anyhow. So you get a better result typically with discardable prototypes because you're using them for their intended purpose. 
Now the book talks about product prototypes a lot and they are a kind of pro prototype. They are useful during the planning progress. The typical process, the typical things you wanna do with a product prototype are to narrow down the architecture. How exactly am I gonna build this thing? Well, I'll try out some ideas on a toy version of my thing and see if they work and to get customer feedback. Hey, customer, we're gonna build a thing that looks kind of like this thing I've built. You know, what What do you want? So both those are information, right? What architectural work is that might be answered by a product prototype or, you know, what are our actual requirements or features here that we're shooting for might be answered by a product prototype. But of course, to my mind, this is a particularly dangerous type of prototyping because it's very, first of all, it's very hard to convince yourself that a whole product prototype like that should be entirely discarded. It's really hard for to convince somebody that they should go to the work of building a prototype that big and complicated as most of these typically are and then throw it away at the end. And so you're likely to be building at least a partly reusable prototype. And like I said, that can be a real problem. The other problem is that, you know, sort of every shortcut and mistake that you make gets amplified and you're going to have a lot of shortcuts and a lot of mistakes in trying to prototype something this big. So it's a, it's a kind of prototype that can be useful. And the trick here is the same trick as with all prototyping is, again, what question do you want to ask? Keep it as narrow as you can. So, for example, a common tool in designing user interfaces all the way to the present day is to not build any software at all, to do what's called a pencil and paper prototype. You literally get sheets of paper and scissors and tape and glue and pencils and pens, and you build a model of the user interface using this, and you walk the customer or whatever yourself through an interaction, moving the paper around. Out, writing new stuff on it, you know, untaping and retaping things to try to simulate what this user interface is going to look like. And that sounds silly, and it is kind of silly. But first of all, you know you're discarding that prototype at the end. There's no way you're going to make that part of your software project. Second of all, it can be very quick and easy to put together because you don't really care that much about the aesthetics and papers may be easier to work with than code. And third of all, it really does force you to sort of concentrate on the questions you actually need answered and do those. I actually had a student, an honor student, a few years ago. We built a software system for doing sort of paper and pencil-like prototyping easily in a system called Inform7. It was really interesting to look at that and think about how it went and how different it was from building what they call wireframes to do user interfaces. The other kind of prototyping you typically do in industry for user interfaces is what's called wireframe prototyping, where you build essentially a version of the user interface in software. And it tends to be sort of worth the worst of both worlds, a significant fraction of the work of building the real user interface and yet significantly yes, less useful in answering questions. And so, yeah. Prototyping is fantastic. Think carefully about it. Keep it as a tool in your tool belt as you do things. And when you have a question, when I have a question, one of the first things I think about and how to answer it is, can I build a thing that answers it? And that's prototyping for you. So that's what I have for you in this brief lecture. I hope it was useful. Thanks very much for listening. And I look forward to talking to you again real soon.